More than 2,000 years ago, natural philosopher Lucretius opined on the nature of things, suggesting that all things are made of atoms. To justify this view, he pointed to dust dancing in a sunbeam. He reasoned that the dust must be constantly bombarded by the tiny motions of invisible atoms. Why else would they dance? And it was an almost perfect description of what actually happens, but it took nearly two millennia to be proven. In fact, this phenomenon is not limited to dust particles in the air. It happens to basically any sufficiently small particle suspended in a fluid. We now know it by the name Brownian motion after botanist Robert Brown observed pollen undergoing random motion while suspended in water. And, of course, it was Albert Einstein in his 1905 Annus Mirabilis who gave the first theoretical explanation for the rate at which the random motion occurs. His work was the final piece of evidence needed to prove the existence of atoms and molecules, and even let us calculate their size and mass. So how does it work? Well, if you zoom in enough to a fluid, the molecules that make it up are constantly in motion, bouncing against each other at all times. And if you place a larger body in the fluid at any given time, by pure chance, there will be more molecules bouncing off the body in one direction than another. Consequently, the body gets pushed ever so slightly in that direction, only for it to happen in another direction a moment later. The end result is that the body moves in a random walk. It's that random walk that we call Brownian motion. Now, what Einstein did was to use this heuristic explanation to derive the quantitative properties of the phenomenon, like how quickly, on average, a larger particle moves when undergoing Brownian motion. This is captured by a probability distribution, expressing the likelihood of finding the particle at a certain place at a certain time. And the probability changes with time in a way that can be predicted using the diffusion equation. That was Einstein's first breakthrough. The only piece left to be understood is how to relate the rate of diffusion, which in turn characterizes the average speed, in terms of measurable quantities like viscosity and temperature. And of course, being Einstein, he did that too, by considering a thought experiment about osmotic pressure. I'll spare you the details, but the end result is that the constant controlling the diffusion, called the diffusivity, can be shown to be proportional to the temperature of the fluid, inversely proportional to the viscosity, and critically, inversely proportional to the size of the molecules. And with that, Einstein could predict how big an atom was, proving their existence and confirming the beliefs of Lucretius from nearly 2,000 years earlier.